So I was watching a Netflix series called Wild Babies, and it tells the story of this little orphan monkey. I think her name is Emma. She's an orphan, right? So she doesn't have anyone to protect her, and there's predators around. What this means is that she's always on alert. She's always facing danger, and she can't fully rest like the other monkeys. And you can see that they show how the other monkeys can relax and don't have to be so serious all the time because, you know, there's adults taking care of them. Now, in this monkey society, there's a hierarchy. And because her mother died, she's kind of left out in the open without a place. She keeps on trying to be noticed by the elders, by the other monkeys, and even by the monkey children. But whenever she tries to establish a friendship, she's ignored. Now, because she's all by herself, she has to spend every waking moment trying to find food because there's no milk for her. And she also can't rest like the other monkeys because of the predator, and she can't really sleep for that long. Not to mention, she never gets touched. No one ever caresses her. And she keeps looking at the other little babies in other adult monkeys' arms, and the adult monkeys are picking ticks off of them and doing all sorts of things. And every time she tries to approach one of them, she's completely ignored. We can tell she has no social place. She has no time to do anything other than find food. She can't fully relax. And she seems to deeply yearn for some sort of attachment with one of the other monkeys. Now, it's really heartbreaking to watch, but towards the end, when she's kind of desolate, looking off into the distance, an older monkey comes and starts picking ticks off of her. It's really beautiful to see because for the first time in the whole documentary, you can see her finally relax and she closes her eyes and it's so delicious to see her like, wow, I hadn't stopped to think about how much her nervous system was basically going crazy, right? She was never able to just let go, to just rest. Now, I thought this was interesting because the same thing happens to human babies. Even if we do have parents, if we grow up in an environment where they don't seem to be emotionally or, or physically available to us, we will also feel like orphans. We might also feel like we have to fend for ourselves and spend all of our waking moments just trying to survive, have our needs be met, and also try to find attachment. You see, when human babies don't have these needs met, like the need to have a place in a social hierarchy, the need to have food, right? To have someone give you food when you're completely vulnerable, the need for affection and touching and some sort of healthy bond. So what happens is those human babies will grow up acting like they are still those desperate little orphan babies. And they will actually be adults that are going to look for attachment and self-expression and ways of meeting their needs that are actually going to be quite self-destructive. This can happen, for example, to children of narcissists and parents that suffer from other mental conditions that render them incapable of truly being attuned to the child's needs and knowing how to meet them. For whatever reason, these parents cannot truly be in their body, present and attuned to the children's needs, and they're not able to meet those needs either. So if we get to our adult phase without having done a little bit of inner work, then we're gonna keep on acting like these desperate little orphan monkey babies that don't really know why they keep getting into these painful, repetitive experiences. One of the things we're gonna have to do is learn how to regulate that nervous system, which involves daily types of strategies you're gonna use to get grounded, to focus on your breathing, and to kind of teach yourself how to actually relax. We're also gonna to have to go through a grieving process where we acknowledge, accept, and grieve the fact that we're never gonna be taken care of like babies. We're not gonna have the experience of being able to be completely vulnerable and dependent on someone who's bigger than us. Now, after we go through this grieving process, rather as we go through it, we learn how to mother, father, rather reparent ourselves, right? We learn that in the adult phase, it is possible to get compassion, nurturing, care, and stability from our own inner adult self. Now, this is a transformational process that will revolutionize repetitive experiences that are very painful and really rooted in unmet childhood needs. You can learn how to reprogram the way that you deal with these needs in your adult phase. I help children of narcissists face this process of grieving the vulnerability that they will never experience but also learning how to repair themselves so they can be healthier adults. As adults, we can find healthier ways to finally satisfy those needs and move into an expression of life that is truly based around nurturing ourselves and knowing and also following our values.